Hello everyone and welcome to another Let's Play of Quest for Glory 1. My name is Anna Mardal. When we last left off, I had we'd seen the Thieves Guild and I said I was going to take a few minutes on my own and um, play the dagger throwing game because I knew I would need to save scum it a little bit. Um, just to grind up some cash until we reach the point where you've earned enough cash from him and he basically treats every game after that as high stakes. <clears throat> I'm coughing. Um, so I'm going to open that game. So I have earned, we have, I think I was able to get two, maybe three 30 silver games out of him before that was all. So it wasn't very many, but I had to save scum a couple times to figure out what the highest, because like at 35 or 40, I couldn't quite beat him. And it's actually a really clever game mechanic in terms of showing his personality, because like I said, the higher you bet, the better he plays. So at 35 and 40 and 45, he would beat me by, by, by like one point. <laughs> and it really does feel like he's just that good that he can lead you on and then come in at the end and, and beat you by a point. Um, so I had to drop the, the stakes down to 30. I beat him in two or three 30 silver games. We're up to 143 silver coins with one gold, so it's really 153 because the gold is worth 10 silver. And I want to show you what happens after you've earned enough money from him. So I'm going to bet another 30. He says, so you think you're pretty hot stuff, eh? Well, we'll see about that. He would have said that if we ever bit 50, but um, like I said, once you win a certain amount of money from you, he stops sharking you with, with, oh no, I'm not very good at this. Gameplay in attempt to get you to bid high and just beats you to death with. So let's, I'll show you how he plays when he takes it seriously. So this is us. Okay, so that's, that's not a bullseye. Maybe a little bit harder. Oh, that was not very good at all. Um, yeah, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's what we're up against. <laughs> so, um, so this is, you know, me. Boom, boom, boom. Bullseye every time. I'm exhausted. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. 36. Looks like I won that one. Must have gotten lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, um, you can only... Um, bill him for coins for so long which is in my opinion clever like i said i think it 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 was a really clever way of conveying his personality with while at the same time introducing limits so that the player can't abuse this mechanic to get a million silver um so it's uh, mid-afternoon one thing we will so one thing we will do is we will be coming back here to to play again and you say, well, Anna, why would we play again if he's no longer uh, letting us win and he wins every game? Because <laughs> there's no way we will ever hit every bullseye at every throw. And even if we did, we'd only tie with him. So why would we ever come back and play again? This is the, in my opinion, the easiest place to scum up um, throwing as a skill. We're going to want to max out all of our skills to 100 for no reason, just because you don't have to do it to win the game. You just have to do it because I'm me and I like maxing my skills out. Um, so if we want to max out throwing, there's a few places to practice throwing. Um, one is the archery target at the uh, outside of town on the south side. The archery target is kind of a slow way of doing it. First, you've got to throw all your daggers at it, which, by the way, we don't have any daggers because we're a fighter. Uh, so first, you've got to throw all your daggers at it. Then you've got to collect all your daggers. Then you've got to throw your daggers. Then you've got to collect your daggers. It's kind of time consuming. And like I said, we don't have any daggers. So back in the day when I was young and I didn't know about the Thieves Guild under the pub, I would actually go and buy like 10 or 20 daggers from Caspar, which is incredibly expensive at 20 silver a pop. And I would go out and throw 20 daggers at the archery target and pick them all up and throw them again. <laughs> um, but here, we don't even need a dagger because we're borrowing daggers, throwing daggers from the chief. And we can just come back and bet like one silver and just, who cares if we win? We're grinding our throwing. The other cool thing about this is it takes up time and it makes us tired, which takes up more time. Um, 
So we can use that to, to make the time go faster if we ever need to. Hey, baby, what you doing? You want to lay down? Why don't you lay? No, no, not on the keyboard. We don't lay on the keyboard. Mommy needs the keyboard. Lay down here. Good boy. Okay. My oldest cat is, um, well, I mentioned he's, he's real sick. Um, although he's feeling a little bit better. He kind of goes back and forth. He's, he's just old is the problem. He's old and he has bad kidneys and, uh, he hasn't been adjusting well to the kittens. He's moved from incandescent rage at the kittens, which didn't last as long as I was afraid it would last to kind of, um, jaded acceptance. So they're here and he accepts that they're here, but you know, he walks around like, just throw me in the trash. I know you don't love me anymore. And I love you very much. You are my baby. Yes, even if you are the biggest, oldest cat in the house, you're still my baby. Um, so let's talk about resting. Back in the day, I stupidly, thoughtlessly, no, no, no. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so tired. I'll just rest. What do you think this is? Your home crusher. Deal with this deadbeat. <laughs> it flings you out. So that's, uh... oh, I hit the wrong button. I was trying to hit restore. What is restore? F7, I hit restart for F9. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they don't want you resting in on the underground lair, um, which is kind of churlish of them when you think about it. You think they could put it in some, uh... oh wait, I don't want to climb the ladder. So one thing I'm gonna do, and I don't need to do this, but I want it for the next game because your inventory carries over. I want to buy the, Acme toolkit. Okay, that's not, we don't use Acme. That's what you called it though. There you are. So, uh, thieves toolkit. The thieves toolkit is not necessary to pick locks, um, but it increases the chances that your lock picking will be successful. And um, anything that increases the chances of a high stakes time is it sunset approaches excellent anything that creases the chances of our lock picking being successful is good by my standards no no alms for you today oh here give us silver i feel guilty oh and we also wanted to drink the dragon's breath which we finally have enough um money to do what is this dragon's breath that everyone keeps talking about? Let's order dragon's breath. The bartender is emphatic as he tells you, if you want a mug of dragon's breath, house rules say it'll have to be cash up front. You cough up the cash. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Crusher, our friend here wants dragon's breath. There you go. So it happened too quickly to see, but the uh, the steam made a little skull at the very tip of the steam. You've never tasted anything like it before. Oh, wow. Whoop. <laughs> Maybe you really shouldn't have tried the dragon's breath. Better luck next time, and we hope you saved your game. Well... I guess the guy who told us not to drink the dragon's breath was giving us good advice after all. That means Bruno, who told us to try the dragon's breath, is not our friend. But, you know, I didn't really feel like Bruno was our friend anyway. Just call it a hunch. So, uh, we're waiting for it to be night. Which means, once again, we have to run around. The dryads are coming! Will none of you listen to me? They come out of trees! They're taking back the forest! They require seeds! Hey, we have a fetch spell now, don't we? We could probably use that to get the seed. But right now we're going to wait for sunset. Or for night to fall. Uh, this is the only thing I do not like about the original game is the lack of ways to pass the time when you need something to happen at a certain time. And and like I said, and, and honestly, I think it's one of the reasons why uh, 
the series had staying power, they noticed this and fixed it in the second game. Wish they'd fixed it in the first game, but they fixed it in the second game. And, uh... And that's good and nice and happy. Rrr. I don't think it's interesting in the difference between the first game and the second game. Because in the first game, we're in Spielberg, and we're, we're kind of a fledgling, trying to become a hero, but we're a nobody. And in the second game, we're an established hero, and we go to a much bigger city who needs, basically, a bigger hero. Um, I mentioned that we stay trapped in the valley under snow and everything, no matter how long we take to win the game. You know, every time I hit the time, it says sunset approaches on day four. I've played games that went up to, like, day 200 or something, like... We're not going to be doing that in this game, hopefully. But but I have done that because I was just taking my time and... and ah, there we go. Nighttime. Um, so in the second game, they actually introduce a ticking clock mechanic where you have a very set amount of time and um, events happen on a, on a calendar schedule, whether you're ready for them or not. Um... And that's a, a very different type of gameplay, and I think it was effective in terms of uh, changing how things work, raising the stakes, stuff like that. So, we are at the little old lady's house, and we we are a thief. We've got to rob somebody. Let's start with her. <coughs> we have a lockpick now, and we've got a shiny 55 lockpicking uh, uh, skill from practicing on the healer's barred door. You hear a snick, and the lock is open. Oh, that reminds me. The smell of lavender and dust fills your nose as you walk in. This reminds you of a great aunt's house you once visited. The couch looks every bit as uncomfortable as your aunt's. There is a covered birdcage near the stairs and a knitting basket beside the couch. I wanted to... Here we go. Check on the sound. Because I was listening to my last video and I feel like 11 was just a bit high. So there's a cat prowling around. The little house cat seems harmless, but strangely restless. There's a... Uh... The candlesticks are heavy, ornate, and made of sterling silver. The doily is lacy and shows fine workmanship. It is slightly yellow with age. The knitting bag is decorated on the outside with knitted figures. The little old lady must do knitting when she's not asleep. The little old lady left her purse on the couch. Mighty careless. Against the wall, there is a small wooden desk with a potted plant on it. The desk has one drawer. It's a rubber plant, a bird cage on a tall brass stand. There is a cover draped over it to keep the bird warm and quiet. On the mantel sits an ordinary hurricane lamp, which provides the only light in the room. The fire is out, but the heat from the hearth is still felt in the room. So let's take candlesticks. You take the silver candlesticks and stow them in your pack. Let's open the drawer. You find one silver in the desk drawer and nothing else of any value to you. Is there anything in the plant? Nothing but dirt and leaves there. Can't get at that back one just yet. Search purse. In the purse you find 20 silver and some soiled hankies. You take the silver. Search the couch too. You find three silver that have fallen down in the cushions. Search basket. A string of pearls seems to have fallen into the bag among the knitting. You take the pearls, of course. So the cat is a... Uh... Search plant. Okay, so the ro pot potted rubber plant, we can't... Uh... The cat seems to want something. The cat really likes being petted. Pick up cat, carry cat, look at collar. The cat is wearing a cheap rhinestone collar. Um, get bird cage. Oops, that's not how you spell it. Open bird cage. I thought the bird would squawk. We can't go up the stairs. If we do, they'll squeak and... 
You have a bad feeling about the very deep, low growl emanating from the cat. <laughs> so it turned into a panther. When the little old lady awakes to see what's going on, you have to concede to her through lips that are as raw as hamburger that you've been licked. She summons the sheriff and his goon Otto. So probably best not to stick around. I don't know why the old lady has an enchanted panther cat, but um, she does. And that's her business, I suppose. I want to, I'm going to have to time this carefully because I don't want to get stuck here overnight. Because if you sleep in the street, you will get robbed. So, um, I think we're going to save the second house for last. If we go back in the alley, by the way, and confront the two thieves, they uh, you can show them our, our thieves license, and they say, yeah, yeah, your license, get out. But they never will talk to you. So we have a fence here. Let's sell our newly ill-gotten gains, if only because I really don't want to be searched the next morning whenever, if the, uh, the little lady notices that she's been robbed. And there's a finite number of suspects in town, and we're the newest person in town. So let's uh, fence candlesticks. Let's see now. Deducting the guild cut and allowing for resale markup, that comes to 50 silver. Here you are. Um, fence pearls. 100 silver. Nice, nice. And I think that was it for her house. Everything else was just straight up silver. So we're going to climb the ladder. I would really prefer to go sleep at Irana's Peace because um, we'll get full health and stamina back. Whereas I believe at the Hero's Tale Inn we'll get stamina but not full health, I think. I have to double check that. We'll find out in the morning, won't we? Um, but as I said before, without climbing skills, we cannot get over the wall. So, how's Abdullah doing? Poor guy. How about we sit down? Can we buy a meal for Abdullah just directly? Oh, no, she just brings us a meal. Well, we'll just give a meal. And we've already seen his thank you animations for stand. And by room. The sleep at the hero's tail end. The sleep heals and refreshes you. So yeah, sure enough, our stamina is back. Our health is not fully back. But eh, it's three points, so we could do worse. Order meal. They always serve the same thing every day, which is actually another thing that the second game changes. It really was a, a, a very good and kind of rare example of the sequel doing different things from the first one. Um, okay. Well, now what should we do? It's day is dawning on day five. We're a lot stronger and good at our, our stuff than we were when we first showed up in the valley. So, so that we got that going for us. Let's, let's go see if we can't uh, get those seeds. Assuming we can find that seed again. We got a fetch spell. We still don't have a lot of magic points, but... Don't mind us, just walking on your vegetables. That's right, a monster couldn't see us because we're sneaky. We're the sneakiest. And kind of the slowest moving. Oh, there they are. All right, cast fetch. You get into a good position. You lose concentration and the spell fades. You will have to practice some more. Well, okay, nothing's ever easy, is it? Oh, 
hey, second try. Heck yeah. You placed this seed into your pack. Whoa, they all kind of collapsed. Are they okay? Are they safe? We didn't hurt them, did we? Okay, let's, uh, we've got some extra mushrooms in our inventory that I don't think we need to keep because they're just psychedelic death shrooms and the healer doesn't want any more of them. Which is kind of a shame. I mean, I would just give it to her if she wanted them. She doesn't have to pay us. Better than me carrying them around. I could also probably drop the flowers, but I don't know. Maybe we'll find a nice girl to give them to. Or a nice boy to give them to. Or just a nice person of any gender whatsoever or none whatsoever. Those are the mushrooms again. Just walk around them. Don't want to bother them. Hello, stag. I have brought the seed. Again, you feel a sense of closeness with nature. What a beautiful animal. Have you brought the seed I requested? I did. Give the seed to me. You drop the seed into the dryad's limbs. Now this will boldly grow where none has grown before. Heed now my words, friend of the forest, and heed them well. Friend, you must know that there is an evil in this valley which perverts the ways of nature. The prophecy says that a hero will bring a young human out from this darkness. If you are the one to accomplish this task, there is a potion to break enchantments which you must have the healer make. You must gather these ingredients. Flowers from Arana's Peace, green fur, fairy dust, a magic acorn, and flying water. Farewell, friend. I must return to my concentration. May the forest forever surround you. You see an acorn fall slowly to the ground. Well, you pick up the dryad's gift of a magic acorn. That's one. Bye, stag. Uh, okay then, so we have a we have a quest. We have a quest to make a magic potion. And we need to go back to the, the healer. A quest. She said uh, she said flowers, she said green fur, she said fairy dust, she said a magic acorn, and she said flying water. So We've already got the flowers. That part's easy enough, right? And she gave us an acorn, so we're like two-fifths of the way there. The rest should be easy, right? Oh, it's in the morning. We could go work the stable. <laughs> Gotta get those five silver in. Yes, I am. Carl, please let us in. We're gonna ignore the weapons master when he shows up. I feel bad about that, but he's just too expensive and we tired too early right now. Yes, please. I love the music in this game. I really do. I've seriously considered trying to get the Arana's Peace music and make it like my cell phone uh, ringtone. That's how, again, that's how invested I am in this game that I'm wanting to get this whole MIDI music and put it on my cell phone as a ringtone. But I haven't yet because I'm lazy. There are Let's Plays to make. But I just, you know, I love, like I said, the old art style here. I love this tree. I love this, uh, the, the yellow edging to kind of differentiate the road from the, the dirt. Um, Seriously, this was such a um, beautiful game in its day. Not now, obviously. Um, unless you're a big fan of the retro look, which I clearly am. You say to the healer, I have been to visit the Dryad of the Woods. She gave me a magic acorn and told me the formula for a potion to dispel enchantments. She didn't say anything. Well, let's give her the acorn. So you help the Dryad. That's nice. She does keep the forest around here healthy. So that's how to make a dispel potion, is it? Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> she took that well. <clears throat> so to make the dispel potion, I still need fairy dust, green fur, and flying water. 
Um, she didn't list flowers, so I guess she's just going to count the flowers we already brought her. Uh, do you know where to get this? Ask about fairies. Fairy dust obviously comes from fairies. They dance around mushroom rings when it is night. Fairies are magical beings, so be careful around them. Well, we know where to find a mushroom ring. Um, what about fur? I never heard of a monster around here with green fur. Rare things are sometimes by their nature magical. Hmm, okay. What about flying water? I'm sorry, I don't know much about that. Huh. Well, she, she knew about fairies. She didn't know about anything else. It makes sense she'd know about the fairies. She knew about the mushrooms. Um. I don't know anything about flying water. But they did... We have seen two sources of water. Hi, Bruno. The dragon's breast sucked. Uh, we have seen two sources of water. And here we've seen... Um, he's good at that knife. We've seen a lake, and we saw a waterfall that they called the Flying Falls, and it said the water looked like it was trying to fly off the falls. Maybe it's a poetic license thing? Well, let's just take it to her and see. We do have a flask. We bought one from Caspar, so let's get water. You fill an empty flask with crystal clear water from the waterfall. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Hey, Bruno. The dragon's breast still sucked. Just, just so you know. Killed us. wonder if it kills everybody. Because you would think that they would uh, keep a big flask of poison to sell. Maybe we're just a lightweight. Um, so hey, would this water work? The healer makes an arcane gesture over the flask of water, then smiles. Flying water! How clever! To make the dispel potion, I still need fairy dust and green fur. Okay, so that did work. Unfortunately, it took our flask. Well, that sucks. I wonder if Hildy would like flowers. Give flower to Hildy. You have no reason to do that. Uh, excuse me, I do have a reason. I'm nice. Say hello. Give flower to Caspar. Okay, dang it. Uh, let's buy a flask. Can we have a flask, please, Caspar? Here you are. What else do we have? We've got... We have 200 silver. His chainmail armor cost 500. So, excuse me. That's not something I want to deal with right now. However, there was another spell that we could buy. So let's go spend our money there. I'm a big fan of uh, spreading our money around the town. We're probably one of the few people bringing money into the ecosystem right now since the brigands are scaring away trade and the snows have uh, blocked off the valley by flame dart. Okay, that is all the spells we can get from Zara. So we will never come back here again, I don't think. Um, she does have uh, power potions, but the healer sells magic potions as well and she also sells vigor and healing potions so guess which one we're going to be visiting for our magic potion needs while we're out here gosh I hate littering but I've got stuff in my inventory that I don't know what to do with and I don't want to keep carrying it around so we're going to drop the extra rocks that we're carrying is that all of them and we're going to drop the paper Maybe we can put it in a little pile for the birds to use. Um, what else do we have? We've got rations, broadsword, leather armor, shield. We've got that gem. I guess I could try to fence that, but I don't know. I just, we'll hold on to it. Flowers. I guess we could drop the flowers. Nobody else cares about flowers. 
That, I, that, that irks me. I want to be able to give flowers to people. Um, Lockpick, toolkit, guild license. I wonder what that looks like. I hope it's like uh, disguised in some way because otherwise the first time the sheriff searches you um, maybe he doesn't search you. Maybe they have better um, legal protections in Spielberg than we have. Maybe there's no stop and frisk. Midday. I'd kind of like it to be night again because I, I do want to rob that purple house. There's two houses in town that we can see. And uh, one is the blue house, the little old lady house, which we robbed last night. And one is that purple house. The other buildings that are abandoned, uh, the barbershop, the bakery, and the butcher are barred from the inside and we're not sure where the back door is so we can't really burgle them unfortunately but it would be nice um eat a fruit let's go ahead and use up all our magic for the day cast open Open is one of the spells worth grinding, especially if you don't have pick locks, because at lower level, open essentially won't do... It won't open shit. Um, pardon my vulgarity, but it is true. And so if you come up against a really hard lock, it's very frustrating to suddenly find out that the spell that you were planning to rely on to Jimmy the Lock doesn't work. Very frustrating. Not that that's ever happened to me. Um, okay, so that was all our magic points and our magic went up slightly. Our intelligence went up slightly. Not great amounts, but you know, hey, it's a it's a what's the word I'm looking for? It's a marathon, not a sprint. Could not think of the word. We should probably start, ooh, a brigand. Can we take a brigand? We should probably start doing things like practicing our dodge and shield work. The, the problem, especially with, crap. I thought I was going to get that one. Um, the problem with the fight animation is, especially with, I, I have the game sped up so that our stealth doesn't just bring us to a crawl, <clears throat> which once we master stealth, I can stop being so stealthy and we won't have to uh, have the animation turned up quite so fast. But because I have the animation turned up fast, the battles are kind of faster than I can react to dodge and pull up my shield. And there's a bit of a delay because DOS box is a bit like, whoa, what the hell? This is not an actual DOS machine. It's Windows 7 and I'm just playing an elaborate game and pretend. Um, so I think that's causing a little bit of delay too. Or I'm just old and decrepit because I do remember back in the day when this was first a thing I was a lot better at dodging and shielding than I am now and now I'm just totally crap at it so I can either blame myself or I can blame the equipment. So remember when I said we would come back down here and play the game to pass time? This is one of those times. So we bet one silver. He said, so you think you're pretty hot stuff, eh? We'll see about that. The nice thing about uh, this game when we're grinding for throwing points, which we're starting at 55, is uh, we no longer have to take time to aim because we're going to lose no matter what. But we're just losing one silver. So basically he's training us and he just doesn't know it. Or maybe he does know it and he does it anyway because he cares. I don't think he cares. Uh-oh. Cookie, what you doing? Why are you about to jump on Big Kitty? Yes, we'll play again for one silver. I don't think Big Kitty wants you to jump on him. 
I think he wants to sleep in peace. Oh, you're gonna lay next to him? Oh man, there's some drama happening over here. I'm gonna try to get a picture. Pardon me. You gotta take pictures of kittens whenever they whenever they give you a chance. They, uh, they're so cute. Okay, how are we doing on stats? We're, oh, we've gone up to 63, very nice. So again, for, for one silver, this is way cheaper than if we were to go buy even a single dagger from Caspar, which we would need in order to grind throwing by the archery range. You can't grind throwing with rocks, um, forever. Eventually it just taps out. Okay, so that's enough for now. Climb ladder. Leave the tavern. It's mid-afternoon, but it is, our stamina is pretty low. And we've gone up to 72 on throwing, so that was what, uh, 5, 25, 26, 27, 27 points for three silver, I think it was. Yeah, we'll be able to max that out soon. I thought we'd max stealth out before we maxed out throwing, but look how wrong I was. While we're here, let's pick lock until we're really tired. Hmm, it's not seeming to take our stand. Oh, it is, just very slowly. Pick locks is at 57. I don't know how much time is between, because this is your resting for 10 minutes, and I don't actually know how much time is between the mid-afternoon and sunset and midday and so forth. You'd think I would know that. 59. I believe you can use the healer store to get all the way up to 100. So tedious, slow, but relatively quick. And it helps pass the time, so we might as well do it. Fifteen. Oh, hello. I was informed we could use this to get up to a hundred. Actually. You delicately insert the knot lockpick into your left nostril. Success! You now have an open nose! Does that give us any... <laughs> Luck has gone up. You, uh... 65. Yes, it does. You, um, if you do this without a high enough lock picking score, you will die. Thank you so much, Cookie, for knocking over that cup of pens and startling everyone. <laughs> Looking over the side of the desk like, what the hell? That was weird. Pens just Flew the, flung themselves off the desk. Definitely not my fault. A cat. Okay. So it's sunset. Crap. We still really need it to be nightfall. And once again, we have to pick whether we want to be inside or outside town when that happens. 
it does suck not having a climbing skill. In, uh, I keep talking about how the second game improves on the first. In the second game, they add a spell called Levitate. And Levitate will take care of those pesky climbing needs for the most part. Not all the time. For the most part. If we had Levitate, we could just shoot our way over the wall. But we don't. I am not sure. But I thought, I was thinking maybe the second game allowed you to get out through the main gate. Like you could get out but not get back in the VGA remake. But I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on that. Hey, hey, don't kick Cookie. It's not her fault. She's little. Be nice. She's a little thing. Cookie is one of the kittens. She's a little torty cat. And she's small and fearless. Throwing is up to 83. We're definitely going to max out throwing first. That's funny to me. I, uh... I kind of thought we'd max out stealth first. Because we're stealthing everywhere. But... Nope. We're going to max out throwing. Oh, I can't go in there. It makes me feel bad that I don't give him anything. Okay. So we have about as much stamina as I think we're going to get. Yeah. 29. All right. And the knight is still young. So pick lock. You hear a snick and the lock is open. The people who own this house must have some money. Everything looks new and there is not a speck of dust visible. The room smells vaguely <coughs> of sauerkraut and bratwurst with just a faint odor of smoke from pine wood. From somewhere in the house, you can hear someone snoring. So let's look at the fireplace. The glowing embers from the fire cast a dim light in the room. An uncomfortable looking chair. Get closer for a good look at this vase. Over the mantle is a charming portrait of the sheriff and his wife. An overstuffed chair, a solid oak desk. Hey, don't hiss it, Cookie. Get closer for a good look at the candelabra. It's a small, beautifully decorated metal box with a hinged lid. Faintly, you hear. Faintly you hear Faintly There's some fairly loud snoring going on In this room Okay, And there's a potted plant So Let's die in some stupid ways first Whoop It's hard to be the hero When you're sitting in a jail cell the sheriff apologized for your broken arm, but he did warn you, didn't he? That Otto was only partly trained. In the future, you'll probably be more careful when you're robbing someone. So that didn't work. So Otto lives in their lower... Hey. And we can go in here. Uh-oh. As you see a pillow flying towards you, you hear the sheriff's wife say, Screech! You never dreamed a feather pillow could be so hard. Or was it the floor? You also didn't realize how hard it is for a thief to be a hero. The thief of Baghdad should have this kind of luck. Hey, be nice. She's not getting in your space. She's just sitting on the desk. Mm -hmm. tumble down the stairs. When it comes to breaking in, it looks like the only thing broken is your head. When at last you come to your senses, you find yourself in a jail cell. By the time you get out of here, you'll be too old to be a hero. So that was kind of funny that we got different um, uh, death sequences for each of those. And we also have a box here. 
Gently and stealthily, you lift the lid. As the little music box begins to play, you hear the sheriff yell out, Otto, stop playing with that music box and go to bed! Boy, did you make a mistake! Otto, even in his sleepy state, winds the music box and closes the lid before he heads back to bed. That was close. The goon must have been so dumb or sleepy or both that he didn't even see you standing there. True, but let's just not make that mistake. Let's take the box. You quickly toss the box into your pack. And the candelabra looks like it is made of solid gold. So let's take candelabra. Candelabra? How do you spell it? Candelabra. Haha! -ha. You place the candelabra, candelabra carefully in your pack beneath your cape. Search desk. In the desk drawers, you find an assortment of mostly worthless objects, but you find three silvers, which you take. Search chair. Search couch. Mm, no, whatever. Um, let's move that vase. You take the vase carefully from the mantle and place it gently on the floor. Let's move that picture. By lifting the painting, you can see what certainly must be a safe hidden in the wall. Nice. Cracking safes look a lot easier in the instruction booklet, but ah, there we got it. Search safe. You see a bag of coins. Take bag. You take 50 silver and place the empty bag back in the safe. Let's close everything up. Uh, move painting back. Uh, replace painting. You carefully lower the painting into its original position. And let's just take the vase. You place the vase carefully in your pack beneath your cape. Okay, I think that's everything. Uh, it's, I think we've got time to go sell our loot and then go to the inn. I, again, I wish you could climb over the wall and, um, leave. If only because it would be a nice alibi. Okay, what do we got? We've got a vase, a candelabra, and a music box. Can we listen to the music box? It was pretty. That would be a very bad idea. Someone would hear you playing the sheriff's music box and you'd probably be arrested. I think you can play it outside of town, but I don't think you get the pretty music anymore. I think it just, it says something like, play it again, go to the window. 30 silver, fence, candelabra, that's how we spell it. 75 silver and fence. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the vase. I think that's all of our stuff. Okay. Climb ladder. I didn't even look at how much gold we have. How much gold do we have? Uh, one gold and 339 silver coins. Still not anywhere near enough for the chain mail. It's so pretty at night. I really like the night textures of the area. They did a really good job on that. And we will rent a room. And that is, I believe, the last time we will sleep there. Because from now on, we're going to be sleeping at the inn I like to call Irana's Free. That wasn't a very good joke, was it? No, well, they can't all be winners. Okay, so we've stolen everything in town that isn't nailed down. Now what? Uh, I guess we could go looking for... We should ask the sheriff. Anything interesting happened last night? That's not. We could, um... We could go looking for fairy dust, but she said they dance at night. So, that's no good. Because it's not night now. We'll have to do it later. 
Um, but we know where they are because she said they dance around fairy rings. So fairy ring at night can do. That just leaves green fur. We talked to Wolfgang about most of the monsters in the area. And I don't remember any of them having green fur. And uh, the healer said she didn't know of anything that had green fur. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. So I'm not really sure what is left. There's the mushrooms. Oh, the dryad was south. We could ask, I wonder if we could go back and ask the dryad. She should have told us to start with. If it's in the forest, she should know, right? Oh, what's this? Huh. They're little... I don't know what they are. Look at... You are in the meeps, peep. The colorful, furry meeps timidly pop out of their holes from time to time. This large rock covers a meep hole. A furry blue meep. It's like whack-a-mole. It's a purple meep. Looks pink to me. Oh, that's a green one. Move rock. Open rock. Pick up rock. No, that's not gonna work. I think they talk. The the plants didn't talk. You don't see any meeps. There. You hear squeaky muttering from beneath the ground. It seems the meeps are having quite a discussion about you. Hiya, hiya. Pleased to meet ya. Huh. Hey, just ask me about anything you want to know. Well, can I ask about meeps? We are happy meeps, living in our happy holes. Don't worry, be happy. Uh. Gee, boss, I don't really know much about that at all. Hey, sorry. Do you know the dryad? No, he doesn't know the dryad. Um, fur? Fur is good stuff. Keeps us warm. Mine's the best. It's slight green, you know. Yeah, I do know. Can I have some of your green fur? Oh, you want some green fur? I think I have some green fur around here. Whoa. Is that a spell scroll and a baby meep? Sure is cute. Uh, is that your scroll? Hey, go ahead and take it. It's yours. Are you guys magic? Take scroll. Oh, he's gone. You pick up the spell scroll. As the magical runes fade, you find you know how to cast the detect magic spell. You pick up the pile of soft green fur and place it in your pack. So what is detect magic? Oh, you want a magic spell scroll? I think I have a magic spell scroll somewhere around here. I think he threw that out when he was looking for the fur. I think he threw it out early. Um, no, that's too much. Um, are you guys ever bothered by monsters? Brigands? The weather? Baba Yaga? The Baron? Food? Apples? I think I have some fruit somewhere around here. Sorry, I couldn't help you. Take apple? You look at the apple cores and quickly decide they are of no use to you. Besides, they look disgusting. Okay, so we got some fur. I don't know that that was a particularly useful endeavor in any other regard. But we, we do have fur. Yay, fur. Nice fur. Good fur. Soft fur. 
green fur. Conifer. This is the graveyard, which is kind of spooky, creepy. Let's not linger. Oops. Day is still dawning, so that took no time at all. Nice. Oh, we could go uh, uh, muck the stables. Five silver, and plus it, I think it ups our strength or vitality or something. I don't know. Give her fur. The meep sounds so interesting. I'd like to meet them sometime. I'll get to work on that potion of yours. I still need fairy dust. Yeah, we're working on that. We could be, uh... You sense no magic in this area. Interesting. I would have thought there'd be some on the hut. Just from her uh, potion work. But I guess it doesn't linger like that. Hello, Weapons Master. We could start paying him for lessons, and he does wear us out. There's, there's. So if we want to rest, that's kind of nice. And it's a neat way to get dodge and weapon ability without um, losing all our hit points or dying. I think I'm talking myself into it. He's still there? Well, um, yeah, okay, let's, let's pay for another lesson. Pay lesson. You pay the weapons master price and then let's work on... I'm just smashing random buttons. Don't, don't fail me now, random button smash. The lesson wears you down and you become exhausted. We lasted a lot longer that time. Even as we fought, I could detect your skills improving through practice. It was most prudent that you should give in to my superior skill. You have a tendency to overbalance when you dodge a blow. This will adversely affect the timing and effectiveness of your counterattack. Should we meet again, I would not be adverse to another go-round. Farewell, friend! Yes, 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 good. Okay, so we're down to one stamina point, and... Eh, everything approved across the board. Uh, especially dodge, because that was like at a 10, so... We brought that up pretty well. Um... So what are our goals for today? I feel like our goals for today should be to pass the time until it's nighttime and we can go get that fairy dust that we supposedly need. Too impatient to rest. Hi Bruno. Mid afternoon, so okay, yeah. We, the between the the mucking out the stables and training, we got pretty tired. Um, how are we doing on rations? Eh, four isn't bad. Let's buy a couple more. Buy ration. Thank you for your patronage. Okay, you can only buy them in sets of five. So, I feel very uh, after after spending all that time with no money at all. Now we're flush with cash, and it's it's quite lovely. Um, not so flush that we can buy armor, but still pretty dang flush. Uh, let's see. Uh, Deutsch Mark. Ugh, that's a pain to type each time. Play game. One silver. Shoop, 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 shoop. Go ahead and max out that throwing skill, and I think that'll be all for this video because we're about to reach the hour mark. Crap, we're about to reach it faster than I thought. Well, if we go over a couple minutes, that doesn't uh, mean anything. Uh, yes, one. The vexing thing about grinding your skills is that 
as you reach the maximum points, the amount of useful training is is pretty uh it slows down so it's like a <laughs> i can't think of the name of the graph but whatever the opposite of an exponential is where there's a big a big rush at the beginning and then it, it tapers off near the top oh okay 92 that's not bad so maybe one more as you notice when we first start uh, grinding skills and it goes up from 5 to 20 and oops we're so exhausted everything hurts better get some rest soon um oh crap and I can't um if we keep practicing while we have no stamina we won't get any credit for it I don't think uh, practicing while you're tired doesn't do anything so, Bruno, would you like to play throwy daggers with us? Okay, what time is it? Sunset approaches. Throw dagger. Whoa, Bruno did not want to play throwy daggers, or he did, but the bullseye was our heart it takes too long to draw your weapon against someone with a dagger in his hand it doesn't pay to try to fight someone who uses poison daggers well screw you bruno i didn't even have a dagger to throw i hit throw dagger and you killed me i don't even have a dagger think about that you know i don't think he ever liked us i'm just gonna say it Interesting. He didn't do his whole so you think you're hot. Huh. He's not trying anymore. That's interesting. Uh, what happens if I bet 30 silver again? Maybe the fact that we lost several times caused him to uh, calm down. I always thought that it was the amount of money that caused him to... The amount of money cumulative that you got from him that caused him to start completely trouncing you. But maybe it's the amount of times you win. You got me that time. Say, you're pretty tough. Huh. So we could conceivably continue to grind for cash again. Oh, no. He just said it. So you think you're pretty hot stuff, etc. Yes. One. So you think you're pretty hot stuff. We'll see about that. Okay. This is why we save between games. The uh, VGA remake uh, has this game, but it's not nearly as easy to... Um, to game to save scum as this one is uh so i think they knew that people like me were oh i just want to finish out my stupid freaking throwing skill i'm stuck at 99. i don't want to stay down here from, I, I i've got i've got fairies to go meet We're at 100. Woohoo! No. And, uh, oh crap. Whew, that's close. He didn't, he didn't throw it. Like I said, it's possible to get caught with a dagger. Oh, good. And it's not nighttime yet. Um. Whew. We're at 985 experience points. And that's bad. And I'll tell you why. Um. I said in an earlier video that when we're only at 100 experience points, the forest isn't that dangerous during the day. It's pretty safe. Um, when you hit 1,000 experience points, which I didn't know this until I actually read up on it recently, uh, when you hit 1,000 experience points, the more dangerous monsters start coming out at 
during the day. Um, and up until then, the game figures that you're a noob and you don't need that kind of grief. But uh, but once you're at a uh, thousand experience points, then it's like, okay, you know what you're doing. Uh, have fun. <laughs> so um, in 14 experience points, which I'm sure we'll probably get from the fairies, we will uh, start having to seriously start running from... Um, some of the more dangerous monsters. We will want to eventually kill one of each type of monster in the valley because each type of monster gives you uh, puzzle points, score points, and we want to get a max score of 500. Um, but some of the monsters, particularly some of the most difficult monsters, don't give you anything for killing them beyond that first boost of puzzle points. The the big dinosaur is the really scary red one that we saw in the introduction that was chasing our hero. Um, it doesn't carry money and there's no salvageable stuff on it. The mantra ray, uh, which you haven't seen yet, but we will, and it's the most annoying villain, I swear. Uh, the mantra ray gives us nothing. Um, cheetars and trolls give us stuff, so we'll be grinding those a lot. Trolls especially carry cash and their beards are worth two healing potions. So even if it costs... Two healing potions to kill one, you come ahead. And if it costs less than that to kill one, then, you know, you've got extra healing potions. So we'll be carrying those around in bulk once we start killing trolls. Unfortunately, right now, we are not equipped to carry trolls at all. Our weapon use parry dodge are all terrible, and I've been upping thief skills. So I'm pretty sure that might not have been the best thing for us to do. I probably should have spent more time doing weapon and parry and dodge before I started following the main quest, but I wanted this to be an interesting let's play instead of a <laughs> let's do all the skill grinding at the beginning and then we'll do plots. So um, forgive me in advance for all the running that we're going to have to do. This went slightly over an hour, so I'm going to sign off here. Once again, this is Quest for Glory. My name is Anna Mardal, and I have too many cats. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.